new evidence has emerged. This is something obviously we've been suspicious of on Tisky Sour for a very long time, but these scientists who are employed by the government tend to be more than willing to cover for them and to often cover for them in a very unscientific way. Um, this was evident in SAGE advice newly released yesterday, uh, which showed the scientists said things in private which contradicted what they said publicly. It was also apparent in evidence given by the Chief Scientific Officer Patrick Valance and the Deputy Chief Medical Officer Jenny Harris to the Health and Social Care Select Committee yesterday. Um, I want to take a look at a couple of those key examples. So the first is from the newly published SAGE Minutes. This was on the 3rd of March, SAGE met to discuss the use of behavioural and social interventions on a COVID-19 epidemic in the UK. A uh, very interesting document in general, but what's particularly interesting is this particular paragraph. Uh, so it says, there was agreement that government should advise against greetings such as shaking hands and hugging, giving existing evidence about the importance of hand hygiene. A public message against shaking hands has additional value as a signal about the importance of hand hygiene. Now, that was on March the 3rd, and we know that SAGE meetings are chaired by Patrick Valance or, or Chris Whitty, so the chief scientific advisor or the chief medical officer, mostly both of them. Um, now, on that same day, so on March the 3rd, this is what was said in a government press conference with Boris Johnson flanked by Chris Whitty and Patrick Valance. Well, I, well, Victoria, I can tell you that I, 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 I'm shaking hands continuously. I was at a, I was at a hospital the other night where I think there were a few, there were actually a few coronavirus uh, patients, and I shook hands with everybody. Uh, you'll be pleased to know, and, and I continue to shake hands. And uh, uh, I think it's very important that we, you know, people obviously can make up their own minds. I think the Matt has said that people must make up their own minds, but I think the scientific evidence is well. I'll hand over to the to, to the experts, but, but wash our, judgment, our judgment is wash. Uh, washing your hands is the crucial thing. One, Boris Johnson, completely stupid. I was shaking hands with people with coronavirus. Um, but then the, the, the journalist, or actually it was Boris Johnson, explicitly passes on that question to Patrick Valance, who we know sat in a meeting that day where the, the minutes from that meeting, so what was agreed by all of the scientists there as official advice was to tell people to stop shaking hands. He stood there, sort of shrugged his shoulder and said, just shake your hands. So he, he was directly contradicting what was agreed that day by scientists, why, to cover for Boris Johnson. And we were supposed to believe that these were the scientists who were leading government. No, it was clearly the other way around. Um, there's another example. So this is from the Health and Social Care Committee um, yesterday. And this is not Patrick Valance. This is Jenny Harris. So she is the Deputy Chief Medical Officer for the UK. Um, she was asked yesterday by Jeremy Hunt, who was a terrible health secretary, but is actually quite good at being chair of the Health and Social Care Select Committee. Uh, she was asked about the UK's decision to stop community testing back in March. This is what she said. The issue here is uh, what capacity do we have to uh, to undertake testing and where should that be prioritised? So in um, the unlikely event that the country has um, uh, an ending capacity to test, then uh, I think we we would continue. Uh, however, there is an issue around capacity, and it's not just the testing. I think, uh, unfortunately, some of the conversations have ended with uh, perhaps just thinking about the testing. It's the action that goes with it. Jenny Harris there saying what we always you know, suspected all along, which was the reason that the government stopped community testing was because the government didn't have capacity to mm. do community testing at that point. It was an issue of capacity. That's a reasonable answer. The problem is what Jenny Harris said there when she was under scrutiny from MPs is mm. in direct contradiction to what she said on March 26 when she was explaining government policies to the press and the public. So on March 26, at a press conference, she was asked why Britain had gone against WHO advice and stopped mass community testing. A similar question to that asked by Jeremy Hunt. Let's take a look. But there comes a point in a pandemic where that is not an appropriate intervention. And that is the point really where we moved. We moved into delay. Um, and although we still do do some contact tracing and testing, for example, in high risk areas like uh, prisons or care homes, that is not an appropriate mechanism as we go forward. So that was Jenny Harris saying the reason we're stopping community testing is because it's not medically appropriate. It's a, it's a, it's a matter of epidemiology. You know, she, she's not saying it's a matter of capacity. She's saying mm. one thing to the public, another thing under scrutiny from MPs, just like Patrick Valance is saying one thing in a SAGE meeting and saying another thing to the press and the public. I mean, Aaron, this completely undermines 
the claim that the government have been making that they have been led by the science. And to me, I mean, me watching these, when there is an inquiry, or I mean, when there is investigative journalism into it right now, this really doesn't make these these scientists look very good, does it? Well, Jenny Harries in particular, I mean, I, I remember when we were commenting on that um, that second clip we just played towards the end of March, and she said, well, WHO guidance comes from the World Health Organization, the clue is in the name, world, you have different healthcare systems, and you think, what? You know, a, a, a viral pandemic, you have the, the, the transmission of a virus, it's human to human, doesn't really matter what society you're in. The presumption was that the NHS would have such capacity that it could basically take this on. Uh, but that, that appears just to have been an article of faith. There doesn't seem to have been any science behind it. The preparations were there for something equivalent to a seasonal flu. Uh, and, and even when Jenny Harry is there, is talking in late March, it's as if she thinks we're going to have a seasonal flu, that we weren't dealing with something with a far higher level of mortality. Um, we weren't dealing with something which is actually, in many ways, far more contagious because it's asymptomatic and so on. Um, it's strange. It's kind of like they were in this psychological denial of just the extent of this problem for, for weeks, really until the government has its first coronavirus action plan on, on March the 3rd. But I don't think it's until the end of March that actually we get moving. Uh, and when you think that, you know, the Americans were putting in bids, we now know this. Panorama did a great piece of journalism on this. The Americans were putting in bids for PPE from British firms. Please ramp up production. We're going to import it from you. And yet our domestic senior science advisors are still behaving like it's really just a, a flu epidemic six weeks, eight weeks later. Uh, you, know, you don't want to obviously um, attack individuals in this context, but Jenny Harris in particular seems very remiss in her duties. And again, I think it's it's right to say, look, this is not about a few bad apples or bad people or uh, people who are incapable of scientists. I think you're entirely right, Michael. The way these incentives stack up, if you want to be a science advisor for government, you have to toe a particular line. There are a certain uh, set of parameters you can't step outside of. Uh, I don't think that's a good way to operate in a society where we want good, objective, scientific advice given to politicians so that they can act in full receipt of the facts and an objective analysis of what's going on rather than what they want to hear. Mm. And increasingly, it sounds like, and this is a generous reading, by the way, it sounds like they are being told uh, what they want to hear. Of course, there's a there's another layer to this. We know to an extent that Dominic Cummings and other people uh, close to Boris Johnson were in at those meetings. We could infer that perhaps there were other real-time conversations happening between the science advisors and Dominic Cummings. Uh, again, incentives really all over the place. Dominic Cummings' job is to make sure Boris Johnson gets re-elected. Uh, the job of senior government science advisors is to offer objective scientific analysis and advice. Uh, you have different incentives. Please, please, please. You shouldn't have one of these guys telling one of these guys, I, Dominic Cummings telling Jenny Harries or Chris Whitty, what they should or shouldn't be doing uh, or what advice is or isn't wise. Uh, very, very, very dangerous. And again, one for any future inquiry or investigation. Mm. And I mean, I think the real issue here is you can't have your cake and eat it. So it could be the case that the job of scientists employed by the government is one to, you know, sort of advise them in private and then in public go out and bat for them to the hilt. Yep. You know, that is what some employees are, are supposed to do, and that would be a legitimate job. But that is completely in contradiction to the job of being an independent authority, mm. which we are supposed to, you know, defer to. And so there was a complete category error made by the mainstream media during this period, which was to suggest that these were independent scientific authorities when actually they were employees of the government behaving like employees of the government, perfectly willing to cover for them. And it seems, quite frankly, to lie to do so. Mm.